Hello, my name is Rudy, and welcome to Let's Play Stellaris. We are the Citizen Council on Galactic Unity, and we are near to the end of this playthrough. I think this is the second to last episode. We are currently at war with the Val... the Valdari? The combined Valdari states. Yes, we are, and we're going to cleanse a bunch of their planets. We've prepared our... We've prepared... We've made our demands, and now our only thing left to do is to enact our demands, to make our demands come about through the force of our military. Now we have our fleets currently... Yes, we've dispatched our fleets. We need to be on the lookout for a large enemy fleet. I mean, they certainly can't challenge us militarily, but they maybe have a fleet prowling around that could take out one of our smaller blobs. We have the 10th fleet. Where should we send the 10th fleet? Let's take their capital. And our other fleets are in combat. Oh, we have one fleet bombing the enemy already. So we should send in the troops if we haven't done that already. This should be pretty straightforward. We've done it a thousand times before, and we'll continue to do it, and we will succeed. Oh, here's a transport fleet. I don't know, I wonder where they're headed. Entering orbit of Uva Viba Farav. I wonder what that's all about. Ah, uh, okay. They're just in enemy space. I guess, uh, yeah, these are all fleets left over from the previous war. So, yeah, let's dispatch them to their various targets. Such as right here. Land armies. And whether we had this fleet bombing the enemy as well, we can take this world. No, we just did that one. The 46th fleet, what are you up to? Yes, we can take this world. Okay. The engines are in motion. So we've been doing a lot of colonization. What is... what the, What did we just colonize? We just finished colonizing another planet, I believe. This desert world? Hmm. Where are they and what are they all about? Oh, right, yeah, that's right. We colonized that world. So let's, we should dump them into this sector here, the Kampira sector. And let the planet get nice and developed by from the latest of AI technology. Doop, doop. Yeah, we'll throw all that into a sector. Let's see, that should be good. I guess we'll get a construction ship out here. Like, I'm pretty sure I've already queued up construction for these systems. I guess I'm not sure. But hey, if we have other ships working, we'll get it done that much more quickly. And society research is done. I love society research. Ah, we can get plus one core systems. Only take 77 months to do it. Let us do just that. Okay, how are our factions doing? System survey complete. Ooh, we only have 2% Xenophile attraction and 46% Xenophobe attraction. Excellent. Just what we want. If only we could get egalitarianism down as well. And our militarism is at 18%. Yeah, we, we were looking at some demographics in the previous episode. But we kind of got distracted by that, I think. Yeah, so, I mean, we've, we've modified our species. So, technically, there's only 10 of the original types of Terrans still alive. But we have like... But overall though, we have like... 34% of our population is Terran. 22% is synthetic. Then we have all these different slave races. Yeah. Oh, this... So we have another version of Terran that's only 
Yeah, it's interesting how that works. If we look at our species, we could probably genetically modify those random 10 Terrans so they match the rest of our species. Let's see if we can do that real quick. It might be annoying trying to match up all the traits because you need to, like, modify them. Um, you need to modify them, like, the traits in the exact same order. Like, we need to make these 10 Terrans exactly like these 559 Terrans with communal, enduring, strong, fertile, and thrifty. Let's see, I'm just going to write that down real quick. Okay, I am back. Let, let us modify these 10 Terrans. We're going to modify all these Terrans to be like these Terrans. So then we'll have one unified Terran species. And it will be glorious. So let's get rid of all of this garbage. So let's see, we want to make our people communal. Where's the elephant? Enduring. Strong, but not too strong. Fertile. And finally, thrifty. Situation log updated. That'll take just one month. Species modified. Oh, easily done. Ahaha, uh, ha, 571. Perfect. Let us modify these ones now. So we got communal, enduring. Let's see, we want uh, strong. Fertile and thrifty for the bonus energy credits. 30 population units. Well, we'll see how long. That's a bit. This is going to be a bit tougher for our geneticists. They apparently had an easy enough time with the previous project. Okay, so we're currently bombing this planet. Ah, oh, yes. Yes. I just, all I need to do is click a button, like there needs to be an auto-invasion. Like really, a lot of this combat stuff could be abstracted out. I always thought it was strange how in these large, grand strategy games where you just... Dealing with the machinations and workings of an entire empire, there's all, you're always like fiddling about with fleets and armies on a map. That seems like something that could also be abstracted out, but you know. I guess you gotta... That's where all the excitement lies, right? Right here, in this type of stuff. Not a problem, though. Where they, they like, got us surrounded. So is this all battleships? Yeah. So the battleships had a bit of a tough time taking out all those small ships. I guess that's what happens though. So as I was saying, what was I saying? Yeah, like uh, Hearts of Iron 4 I think does a good job of dealing with naval combat. Like you have a fleet station and a port and then you give it different zones on the map that it operates in and what mission you want it to perform and you know the game just handles whether your fleet can find the enemy fleet and the nature of the battle. I think that's a great system for dealing with combat in a game. We've gained 250 influence. Building build speed plus 10%. Okay. Now what do we want? Plus 5% minerals? Yeah, sure. Exotic patterns of 4. And so we still have some species modification to do. We have one more Terran... One more version of the Terran... Who are these 30? Oh, man, they're Alpine preference. That's right. We want them to be Savannah preference. We forgot about that. All right. Back into the modification tubes or whatever. Excellent. Yes, we have one more offshoot of the Terran species. Let's bring him back in. Going to make you strong. Fertile and thrifty. Two months to go. Alright. Here's another planet to invade. I guess we haven't tried to invade this one yet. Go for it.
Okay. Okay, we've modified everybody. Now let's take a look at our demographic information. So there we go, we just have one... Ah, look at that, 623 pops across 100 worlds. That's what we wanted to see. So now we know for sure that we are 38% Terran. A new species. Many of the Terran inhabitants on Nostia Prime have turned to genetic modification to help cope with the planet's hostile environment? What the hell? I just finished modifying everybody the way I wanted them to be. And then they go, pull this. Where, where is Nostia Prime? I have no idea where that planet is. I think it's over here somewhere. Of course, these are system names. I have no idea what the names of the planets inside the system are. Way to go, UI designers. Yeah, I'm not, I have no idea where Nostia Prime is. Nostria. Maybe it's over here somewhere. One of my newer colonies, right? Or I can I can do a search. You can search for star systems. Ah, yes. This is what we wanted. So the planet happens to be named after the system, which is good. What kind of planet is this? It's a tundra world. Ah. Look, I mean, you'll be fine. Habitability is 40% for Terrans. We could just terraform this planet. You'll be unhappy for a little while. Yeah, let's make it into a savanna world. Okay, so it's going to cause more unhappiness, but... It, it, it'll, it'll be over with soon enough. Okay, continuing... Continuing the mighty war. The great war of annihilation. Station under attack. Oh, station under attack. So we need to take that system over there. And let's see, this fleet is idle let's go there what is happening here I thought I sent in some guys to take over this planet unless we failed to take it over I guess we did fail to take it over I just wasn't paying attention we're at 20% war score good stuff Anyway, what was our latest colonization? This Arctic world? Oh, right, synthetics. Hmm, okay, that's fine. Well, we can put this into a sector, and the sector should be able to build synthetics. That's no big deal. Create a new sector. Situation log updated. Okay, I'll put both these systems into sectors. In fact, all of these. Make it a big sector. And their settings are good. Let's throw them some energy and minerals to get started. Let's see, do we have a science ship around? An idle science ship? We do. Let's get all this surveyed. Good. Fleet destroyed. What? What the hell? Crazy. What fleet got destroyed? Oh, the fifth task force. And we completely missed it too. That would have been a good fight to see. None of our admirals got killed, thankfully. Let us uh, group up these three fleets and send them in to take out the enemy. Alright, what's our next move going to be? It's fairly... Fairly straightforward.
Ah, we're in the middle of combat. Oh yeah, the game was paused. Excellent. We've secured the capital. Hmm, a size 17 alpine world, that's pretty good. I guess we can terraform this as well. Let's make it all savannah worlds. What else do we have around here? Hmm. Size, hmm, size 15. Yeah, I mean size 15 is decent enough. I can't terraform it. Planet has an anomaly. Oh. This planet has an anomaly. What, what's that all about? We should send somebody to go research it. Signs of precursor activity. Okay. We might get this precursor activity taken care of once and for all. You know, that reminds me. In our home, in our home system, we have an anomaly on Mars that we never researched. We should do that. Except I have all my scientists queued up doing other stuff. Let's see. I did, I did a shift click, so hopefully that anomaly research got queued at the end. We'll see. Okay, yeah, that looks like it worked out. Anyway, but I mean, Mars is going to be a terraforming candidate. That's what it, it's like always a terraforming candidate. So we can actually terraform Mars uh, like more than 200 years after the game even started. Volga was unable to build a frontier outpost? Why was it going to build a frontier outpost in the first place? I don't recall queuing up a frontier outpost. Planetary invasion. All right, well, this one won't fail. Like, where is this transport fleet and where is it going? I guess it's just entering orbit so we can use them for fighting. Good. So it looks like we've gotten everything up here, right? Unless there are other planets we can take over. No, we got we got all this. Let's get this fleet out doing something else. The Cus the Chasago homeworld. This world is the ancient homeworld of the Serpent Time. Chasago, one of the founding members of the First League, the vast majority of their cities were located on the ground. And Zosma 2 is riddled with tunnel networks, of which most have collapsed in the two million years since the Chasago went extinct. Probes from the RHS Sapeva Abibib have identified the probable locations of several subterranean cities. Curious. Let's go take out that enemy fleet. You can do it, Devin. Admiral Harrison. Now, what would be awesome is. It's like, first you research the anomaly, then it's like, okay, now it's a, here's a special project to research. Like, can't that all just be one thing? But I digress. Terraforming candidate discovered. Mars. Fascinating. We just never cared. Let's terraform it to a savannah. Hmm, are they going to try and retake the capital? I mean, we have it well secured with our own armies. I don't, I'm not sure what the enemy can bring to bear against us. Situation log updated. They're going to bomb us. Wow, this is a tough planet to crack. 
I mean, the best way to handle ground combat in this game is just to brute force it. Okay, well, we'll retreat in this instance, but I mean... Ground combat in this game is just so one-dimensional. There's no need. There's no point in getting hung up on the, the details. And how's this fight going? Oh yeah, we need to send some armies here. Like, what the heck are they defending this with? They're just defensive armies. Oh well. We'll get them eventually. The excavation of the subterranean Chicago cities on Zazma 2 is well underway, and we have already learned much about this ancient species. They were reptilian, with elongated and legless bodies that could be 20 meters or longer. In adult individuals, all surviving accounts indicate that the Chisago were expert traders, and their trade barges were often the first point of contact between non-affiliated races of the First League. It is doubtful whether it could have been expanded. It is doubtful if it could have expanded as rapidly as it did, without the benefits of extensive Chisago trade networks that already existed before its foundation. An interesting find. Okay, we've located the First League home system. We've managed to deduce the exact galactic coordinates of the Fen Habanus, the home system of the Great First League. We should launch an expedition to the system before someone else beats us to it. Contact the nearest science ship. Alright, how exciting. We don't got time to manage a war. We got this to do. Where is it? Is there a way to zoom to it? I thought there was... What, whatever. Uh, so where is this? There it is. It's in the Hadam Mediator space. What the hell? I want to go there. Well, I see another war with the Hadam Mediators in the near future. But that's okay. Oh my god, what the hell? I guess the moral of the story is you just need to pay attention to ground combat or else you're gonna let all your armies get killed. Okay, this should do it. Perfect. How are things looking? Okay, we're at plus 46. Hmm, I guess I could cleanse planets even though we don't have total victory. I remember when I was fighting the Hadam Mediators, this option was grayed out when I selected the cleanse planet objective. Or something like that. Like, they wouldn't accept it, is what it came down to. Plus 5% weapons damage. I guess we'll go for build cost minus 5%. Everything else is going to take a long time to research. Well, I guess we should head back here. We have all these planets to take. I believe this is one of our military objectives. Bunch of defensive armies. So let's be a bit more... Let's make sure we apply plenty of military force. So we don't have to keep on dealing with these uh, invasions failed. So yeah, the 20 genetic warrior armies on Uskion Prime. They should be good. Fleet combat. So we're going to take this world. System survey complete. I hope we're going to take this world. We'll see. We'll be at the ready, though, if it's not going to work. Because, I mean, they're badly damaged. 
We'll see how this goes. Yeah, this is ridiculous. What? They're just defensive armies. Alright, we gotta send in overwhelming force. So we're gonna get these 19 armies from Oblion and send them in. I'm sure 19 Gene Warrior armies are going to be enough. They freaking better be. First League Headquarters. It was the administrative center of the First League throughout most of its ex existence. And the seat of their great senate. The planet was so densely populated with a planet-wide city covering most of the surface. Food has to be imported from other... Food had to be imported from other members of the world to support the untold billions living on this enormous metropolis. When the League collapsed, these food shipments ceased virtually overnight. Those with the means departed for other worlds, but most of the population remained behind. Mass starvation and anarchy followed as the planet was carved up between warlords and criminal organizations. The population continued to dwindle for a few centuries until the planet had been reduced a little more than a lifeless ghost world. A final epitaph of the First League. Fascinating. Oh, we gain almost 10,000 unity, 150 influence, and society research. Glorious. What a reward. Well, that, that is very reminiscent of the Foundation series with the giant metropolis planet that was destroyed because of lack of food in a similar type of thing. Very interesting. Okay, we got some transport fleets here. Let's send them into there. Let's have them enter orbit. Let's consolidate some of these transport armies. We'd have a much better time if we just consolidated our transports. Instead of having all these smaller fleets running around. Okay, we're about to take this world here. Yeah, this is working much better. I mean, the key is to have a lot of armies so you also do lots of damage to the enemy. The sooner you kill them, then they have less opportunity to fight back. Excellent. And we're about to seize... We're about to seize this world, finally. Okay, let's see. We have, we have a lot of these little, smaller armies around. Let's send these two Gene Warrior armies to enter orbit as well. Or a total of four. And these guys. We can group them all up. And we should finally be able to take this world. Land those armies also. Like, how the heck are these guys holding out so much? Enemy Finally, we did it! Okay, well, that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments, and be prepared for the final episode coming up next. Have a great day.